has been a pretty interesting season for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you tease anything else that's coming up? Two more episodes. Yes. Lots of crazy stuff. Thank you for clarifying that. I've been saying three. <laughs> I thought today was Friday. <laughs> Uh, um, it's been a busy week. Yeah. <laughs> Big last two episodes, though. Lots of huge things happening. Big surprises. But we're not going to lose any characters, are we? I hope not. <laughs> um, I have to add, you really could be passed for Clancy Brown. So. I know, and right? I wonder, Isn't that crazy? <laughs> like, was that part of the cast? Did they mention I mean, you, you know, the, the, the well... That? I mean, what was funny was when the when I initially got the audition, the phone call from my agent was, I have this audition for you for the show Sleepy Hollow, you're playing the son of uh, Sheriff Corbin, and you're a dead ringer for this guy's kid. And I said to myself, I wonder if it's Clancy Brown, because I hadn't seen the show before, oh, really? so I didn't even know. And then I, go I IMDB'd it, and I was like, it's Clancy Brown, because I'd been seeing him in movies for years, and I was always like, I can't look like that. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 What's it been like to kind of play out the uh, Joe and Jenny relationship this season? Because it's been one of our, my favorite parts of the oh, season. Thank you. <laughs> it's been one of my favorite parts of the show in general, to be honest. It's been very rewarding as an actor and also as someone who loves Jenny. It's really cool to see her um, sort of blossom a bit like, and allow herself to experience love outside of you know, her sister. Um, and see how difficult that is for her, but then how you know, patient Joe has been and just working through these scenes. I mean, some of the scenes with Joe and Jenny have definitely been you know, my favorite things in the, in the series. Yeah. Yeah. She's, I mean, she, Jenny's had such a tough life, so I think it's it's nice to suddenly see some, some positive, some nice, good things happening for her. Is their father back for a while? We'll definitely see more of the father. Yeah. I really, um, I don't want to tell too much, but it's definitely an interesting story that continues, um, so we'll see more of that. Yeah. Well, at the end of this week, it really seemed like she was, she got the taffy from him, and yeah. so it seems like maybe she's softening up towards uh, Ezra. That hurt, that's for sure, <laughs> that didn't hurt, so... I love that scene. I'm so, I, I love my dad. Lindy Greenwood loves her dad so much. So um, I love the whole dad storyline. I think it's really interesting to see. And also, you know, dads and daughters of color. You know, I see that so often. And, you know, I hope it ends up positively. So we'll see where it goes. So the show uh, spends a lot of time exploring gender roles, right? We get the lens of Ichabod. He has these time-displaced values, and we uh, deal with that. And we're at a time now where we're also dealing with how we view uh, gender roles, and so for the character of Ginny Mills, we see that she uh, is both a fighter uh, and a lover. So, how do you uh, specifically work at conveying to the audience that uh, strength is a quality that can also be feminine, uh, and that love is not something that's weakness or feminine? I think that's that's beautiful. That's part of why this whole season has been so wonderful. It doesn't take away from Jenny's strength. It adds to it. She's a lot, If she can allow trust and love into her life, it does nothing but better for her as a person. Mm. And, um, yeah, I think it's a really good lesson for the show, and it's a big question. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Do, you, uh, do you guys see uh, Jenny and Joe as sidekicks to Abby and Frank, or you guys are one cohesive group that doesn't work without the artists? I'm I'm, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's it's you know the show. I mean, as it is right now, is very much. I mean, that's it's Abby and Crane's story, and and we're, we do feel like we're there in the support. And I think um, of sort of their mission, which is a communal mission, obviously. Yeah. But um, you know, yeah. I'd say yeah. I'm, I'm Robin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, if you're Robin, then I'm... Yeah. Nightwing? Nightwing! Nightwing! Nightwing. <laughs> there we go. I love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's been your favorite um, scene to play out this season between the two of you? For me, um, there's been a couple. I love... I actually think it was uh, a couple episodes ago. It was after we fought the ghoul and fought Nevins, and it's the scene where we wake up in the morning in her trailer, and we're just lying on the couch together talking about our dads. It was a short little scene at the end of the episode. It's a good scene. Uh, it was just one of my favorites. I love when I read it in the script. I, I found it really moving and just simple and human, and uh, I thought it was shot beautifully. Yeah. I kept saying when we watched it, I was like, she just like looked amazing, like the way it was lit, and it was just like a really kind every of now and again they get to every every right so often the they, make, they make it no, but uh, it was just a very kind of human. Human, simple scene. And that was one of my yeah. yeah, I liked it when I kicked your ass. <laughs> when we were, uh, kickboxing. You had oh, ma yeah. magic powers. It wasn't quite. Oh me. well, was, it would have been the holding, same result. I was holding my own. Until, uh, <laughs> yeah. Can we follow up with the whole uh, humanity angle you were mentioning? Yeah. Uh, so Joe's kind of arc as a character is dealing with his identity. So 
former Marine, then you're the supernatural creature, you're Wendigo, yeah. uh, and now you're uh, in the mix of trying to find who you are, but it's been such a huge pendulum uh, swing from finding an identity and all this kind of mundanity, and then yeah. all of a sudden finding that identity uh, in the midst of all these supernatural things going on, so how do you keep that at the forefront so that it doesn't get washed out? I think as an actor, you find the thing like at the beginning that you can latch on to just as a human. I mean, it's, it's hard to latch on to the supernatural, but what I could latch on to at the beginning coming into the show was I'm a guy who's just lost his dad, and he doesn't know why his dad died, he doesn't know the circumstances, and he's got a lot of shit to work through about that. And that, So that was my way in, and that's something that... that just as a person you can identify with independent of any supernatural thing. So so when you have something like that with a character, that you find that as an entrance. And I can say, well, okay, I'm a young man trying to mourn and process the loss of a parent. Mm. Like, that's the way. And that was the starting point. And fortunately, they've let that kind of be a continuing storyline for Joe throughout this season. And that's always been the thing for me that anchored it in the thing. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you think Jenny would lose any kind of sense of purpose if all those evil powers were done with? You know, all the, the evil, the dark side. I don't know. Would I she don't think she'd know what to do with herself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's been her identity for so long. Way before we met her. So. What are your favorite Sleepy Hollow monsters? I really liked the Banshee. I loved the Banshee a couple nights ago. That was one of my favorites. Yeah. And Kindred. the Wendigo. And the Kindred. I don't like the Wendigo show. <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. Um. And I love that they brought Kindred back. I thought that, cause oh, that Kindred, just always looks yes. awesome. And, yeah. Well, Kindred. Um, there have been some awesome ones, yeah. Can you talk about the physicality of the Wendigo scenes? I mean, because obviously... Yeah, well, that's actually, it's not me in the Wendigo costume. That's uh, Marty Martulis, who does a lot of our creature work. Because it takes him about five hours to get into that full Wendigo suit. Mm -hmm. So if they're doing a scene where it's me, and then it transforms to the Wendigo, and it transforms back, if it was me, they would have to stop production for five hours, and then stop production again to get me out of it. But when we have Marty do it, then I can step out, and he can step in, and they can do a CGI you know, transformation between the two of us. Also, wearing that makeup and prosthetic and everything is brutal. It's brutal. Like, it's really, those those monster actors are really impressive. Yeah. Like, they're able to stay kind as well. They're always the nicest they're people. always the nicest guys. And they don't get much credit because you don't see their real faces. And they're some of the hardest working actors on the show. Yeah, you know? definitely. So... Have you ever wanted to step into that, though, and try it on once just to know what he's I'd going to through? I'd love to try it on, but yeah. I'd be able to take yeah. it off. I mean, working a 15-hour day in it is yeah. awesome. Miserable. I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think um, fans love the sisters Mills so much and are so protective of them? Yeah, I'm happy they are. So am I. I think it's a really unique relationship that we don't really see very often in television. Um, two really strong women that come together for a common purpose and are nice to each other and love each other and don't fight over petty things like boys. Not that boys are petty. You know, like whatever. Um, so I think it's a, a really important relationship to show to particularly young women, women of all ages, and men. You know, it's just a great relationship to look at. Yeah. And it's wonderful to be a part of it. Working with Nicole is great. Our scenes are always, I think, really touching and, yeah. and awesome. So. And genre has historically been so male-dominated with characters, so I also think for young men to get to be watching a genre show where the women are, you know, capable and in charge is is really good, mm -hmm. you know, and they're not just, you know, in tiny little sexy superhero costumes. They're mm -hmm. actually just humans, you know. Beautiful humans. Well, yeah. Following <laughs> up on that, uh, with the idea of uh, representation and all of that, so here's a show that's based on an American classic written in a time where people of color and women did not have any real representation. Uh, so is there a sense of duty or perhaps a sense of joy with reinterpreting uh, this story and finally making it inclusive and better representative of America as we know? I think it makes you feel... Yeah, joyful and, and sort of powerful and like um, we have the, now the power to do that in this world. It's really we've come a long way. There's a lot, there's a long way to go, absolutely, but we've come a long way when you think about the environment that that story was written in as compared to now. It's pretty incredible. It's inspiring, actually. 
Yeah. Do you uh, do you guys find yourself researching American history? I mean, you know, Tom Weiss is more than history. Yeah. All that stuff. Do you guys find yourself doing that as well? Not. I mean, we've been spared a lot of the, you know, because we're sort of more doing the present day artifact hunting and right. less of the sort of flashback stuff. So I haven't I haven't had enough excuses on this show to do historical research as I would like to because it's interesting. I definitely do every now and again. Like, look up what the com comes up in the script and the Canadian and it's kind of been an interesting like way into American history. If you ever have to do a citizenship test yeah. and I ask you those questions, <laughs> you're going to be it's like, gonna be like all George Washington was a zombie, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're gonna be Everything with a supernatural. <laughs> exactly. They're like, what is wrong with this? Actress Lindy Greenwood has been denied right. citizenship. Yeah. Been deported. <laughs> <laughs> She's been escorted to the yeah. border. Yeah. <laughs> What's been the most difficult... Um, uh, well, for your pers uh, respective characters, what's been the most difficult thing to do? Well, play, I guess. To, to play. Yeah. Um, In this season, anyway. Yeah. I'll say that there were um, there were times when I think. Uh, you know, we had so many back and forths in the relationship this season where, like, they would be mad at each other and things would be tense. And there were definitely times when I was just like, oh, come on, like, like I just want, the, I want it to work. Mm -hmm. And as an, a as an actor, I was getting frustrated by that. But then I realized, well, I can just, as the character is feeling the same way, is like, mm -hmm. I just want this to work. You know, the trailer argument. Well, the trailer, I mean, but, you know, that was one of many. <laughs> that was, you know, so I think that was... That was an interesting episode that because was really actually a lot episode. was cut out of that episode because okay. it happens in TV. You know, you have one storyline and then it doesn't work and you have to, like... So there was, like, so much more we anger. For, yeah, plant. we were supposed to fight this giant plant and Jenny was like, one of the reasons she was so angry when she ran away is because there was more to that story, but we didn't see it. I had taken so something from the trailer yeah. and put it in the Masonic cell and yeah. it, like, acted... It was, like, a little, like, house plant, but it was actually super natural and the, the sonic cell activated it and became like became this, this like crazy thing. thing so there's this all this back backstory and really you see jenny like really pissed off which i mean she was pissed off anyway yeah. but like she was particularly pissed off because of the plant storyline not really the yeah. joke. so that's what happens as an actor sometimes you're like oh my gosh that, that doesn't really work when you look at it because like you know. <laughs> but that's fine one more question, if you guys have one. Uh, yes, actually, the show, I enjoy it greatly, but it creeps the hell out of me sometimes, <laughs> and I don't get to go to sleep sometimes at night. <laughs> Good. You Sorry. know, I have to go cut on, you know, Disney Channel or something. Good. Yeah. Even though you work on the show and you see everything behind the scenes, you know what's fake, what's not, do you guys ever get creeped out by any of the things you guys deal with or have done on the show? I, I think that once I see it, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Many times I've seen the episodes and I'm like, that is really scary. Like, legitimately scary. Yeah. Because I think when we're doing it, it's so, you know, behind the scenes, there's people everywhere, monsters are wearing, like, no gloves or whatever, so you see their real hands, and you know, you see, so, um, but when you see it all cut together with the visual effects and all of that, it really does become a creepy show yeah. that I love. I, I love horror, so I'm happy that it yeah, does that. Yeah, I have some weird dreams. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually not like I'm dreaming about one of the monsters from the show, but I'll definitely just have some weird dreams after some long nights of shooting in a cemetery, you know. Yeah, yeah we were just shooting not too long ago in Greenwood Cemetery, which is Greenwood my last Cemetery. name, and I was just like, yeah. Yeah. It's gonna get sad. I hope this doesn't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Are we, thank, thank you. you. Thank you guys. Yeah. So